Do you want a professional looking finish? Then the secret is proper preparation. Whether it's stripping off wallpaper or sanding woodwork, putting the effort in at the start means you will end up with a better finish. Okay, so let's look at some of the products and some of the tools you'll need uh, for this surface preparation. We start off with uh, a pair of steps. These need to be high enough for the actual area you're working on to make yourself nice and comfortable and safe. Once we've got the steps, we then need to lay our dust sheets. and We put our dust sheets down nice and neat in the area you're working on. If you've got wallpaper, obviously that wallpaper needs to be, to be stripped. And the way we do that is with a nice bucket of warm water, dampen the wallpaper with a, with a brush, leave it for a few minutes for the water to soak in so it actually makes life much easier for you. If the wallpaper you are removing is a vinyl paper, before wetting the backing paper, remove the vinyl layer first. This will pull away very easily by finding an edge and just pulling away. No water needed. When wetting the background paper, take care when working around sockets. Turn off the electric supply before you do this. And then with a scraper, scrape off your wallpaper. Alternatively, if you're feeling a little bit flush and you fancy treating yourself, you can buy a steam stripper and this will make removing wallpaper much easier. Once removing your wallpaper, this will reveal cracks and holes and you need to fill these prior to going on to the decorating stage. And we would do that by using a choice of fillers. A powder filler, a quick drying filler, a fine surface filler. Once we've decided which one to use, we then look at the tools. If we're using the powder filler, we need a nice flexible filling knife. And this will actually give us a real nice finish prior to painting. Alternatively, if we've got small cracks on skirting boards and uh, door frames, etc., maybe a putty knife would actually help us get a, a good finish there prior to painting. If you've got uh, cracks and movement cracks on skirting boards and door frames, what you actually need to use there is a cork, a decorator's cork. And this is applied with a mastic gun and basically we just break out the crack and fill it like so. If you've got skirting boards which is actually varnished or, or stained, you would need to use the brown. If it's a painted skirting board, you'd need the white. Once your filler is thoroughly dry, you are ready to rub down. And the most important thing maybe is to consider wearing a dust mask. This makes much, much more comfortable for, for yourself. So we would recommend wearing a dust mask. And then when it comes to actually rubbing down, there are a variety of uh, grades of paper. And generally, the nearer, or well, just before our final coat, we actually use a finer grade of sandpaper. Alternatively, you could use a sanding block. And the benefits of sanding blocks are that you get a nice, even rubbing down finish. Also, these are available in lots of different grades. So that just about completes what we need for our preparatory products. If in doubt with surface preparation, just pop into your local Dulux Decorator Centre where the staff will be more than happy to supply you with the advice you need. We're now going to look at filling holes and cracks in ceilings and walls. And we're going to use our polyfiller powder filler. You'll notice that I'm actually going to be mixing this on the pasting table but I have covered the table with newspaper because the last thing I want to do is actually get filler onto the table so I'm going to be nice and clean and work clean. I've also picked a nice piece of plywood nice and clean to mix my filler up onto. So the first thing I'm going to do is to actually put an amount of filler onto the, onto the board. When mixing your polyfiller just mix enough powder for the areas you need to fill. And with a nice creamy mixture, it will not shrink. You can then reseal your pack, store in a damp-free room, and it can then be reused on your next decorating project. Once I've got my powder on there, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my scraper, and just with the end, just actually going to introduce a hole into the centre of the, of the filler. So when I mix it, it's a little bit like mixing cement. I've got material, I've made a small hole in the centre and I can add water and just mix it in. And the most important thing is that we don't get it too wet. 
and we just get a nice consistency. If you do get too much water in and it's too thin, you'll actually need to fill it twice because it shrinks. So at that stage, it's much easier just to add a little bit more powder and actually mix it back in until you get a nice creamy consistency. That way it won't shrink and you'll get a fantastic result. So that, that is the consistency you need. It's nice and heavy, nice and thick, and that is the material we're going to work with. All buildings will have various types of cracks. These could be movement cracks or hairline cracks. This is a typical example of that type of crack. However, what we do need to do is to actually, with the scraper, open out the crack to give us more of a surface area for the filler to stick to. So what I've done here is I've actually used the scraper, the edge of the scraper, to actually introduce a V-shape into the, into the crack, which will give me more of a surface area for the polyfiller to stick to. After raking out the crack, the next thing we need to do is just make sure we get rid of all the dust. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that crack and for this I'm going to use a flexible bladed knife. My polyfiller ready to use. Push the filler deep into the crack, removing excess filler with a knife as you go along. If the hole is deep, you may need to build this up with two applications. Make sure you fill the whole crack top to bottom. When removing the excess filler with your knife, leave as level as possible, as this will reduce the amount of sanding down needed afterwards. Once filled, I need to leave that to dry before rubbing down, dusting off and then painting. Okay, what we've got here is we've got where a picture was hung, we've taken the screw out and it's obviously left a small hole here. What we need to do is fill that. So first of all, I'm going to use my scraper and I'm going to soften the edges. And then with the same filler I've used to fill the cracks, I'm just going to put a nice amount of filler in there and allow it to dry and harden before we rub it down and paint. So you may remember earlier we spoke about the quick drying filler. This is a ready mixed version and the beauty of this product is it's dry and hard and recoatable within 10 minutes. The idea is that you squeeze it onto the surface area and again just using your knife fill that area. In 10 minutes time that'll be hard dry enough to lightly rub down and then paint. Ideal. Okay, our polyfiller is dry now. So what we do need to do before we start painting is to give it a light rub down. And I'm going to do that with a medium grade sandpaper. When rubbing down, don't forget to wear your mask, it's very important. So after rubbing down, we do need to dust off the surface um, because we don't want any bits into the paint. And we've now got a nice smooth uh, surface to paint onto. Okay, we're now going to look at how to use decorator's cork. The idea of this product is that it's actually a flexible filler. So where it goes is on the top of skirting boards, around door frames, basically anywhere where there will be movement. And the idea is that this product actually moves with that movement. It comes with its own top, and one of the tips you need to, to uh, take notice of is that when you cut this, you cut it at an angle, and also don't cut it too deep, because otherwise you'll just get a lot of wasted product. I'm now going to use the decorator's cork and the idea of this, as I said, is to go into the top of the skirting 
bottom of the wall and we'll use it with a cork gun, just gentle pressure and we're actually filling that gap as we go along nice and slowly, nice and steady and then it's sometimes easier to just work out of the corner as well, like so. Once we've done that, just click that button which takes the pressure away from the top so it doesn't come all over your um, dust sheet. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a brush just to fill in nice and gently and then finally with a damp sponge, not too wet, just a damp sponge just to clean up that surface. So that's corking. What you now need to do is allow it to dry thoroughly and then it's ready for painting. OK, I'm now looking at preparing this six panel door. It's actually a little bit rough at this stage, so I really do need to give it a good rub down. For the flat areas, I'm using a medium grade sandpaper. And for the beadings, I'm actually going to be using a flexible sandpaper. When rubbing down, work your way from the top to the bottom, following the direction of the grain. Once completed, remember, dust off prior to painting. OK, after rubbing down, it is a lot smoother, but what I really want to do is get a fantastic finish. To achieve that, I'm going to use our polyfiller fine surface filler. And this is actually used by just buttering the coat on. It's quite a nice soft product. So you just fill out the panels just as if you're buttering bread or buttering toast. I would certainly do all the main panels with this and maybe the worst of the other um, joints here. Once that's dry, a very light rub down and that will give me a fantastic surface to put my undercoat on prior to my gloss. There are over 190 Dulux decorator centres. So for further advice and product information, call into your local store or visit our website www.duluxdecoratorcentre.co.uk where you can also order online. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter.